Good morning. Morning, Professor. How are you? Good, sir. And you? Pretty good. Pretty good. We'll give everybody a few more minutes and then we'll we'll get started. Yes, sir. George, you missed a class the other day. I think that was the first one. Yeah, I didn't quite. Well, I mean, I was there for the second half, I think. Oh, okay. I use, use the example. I said, I don't think George ever um, clicks off the link. He just leaves it open and waits for the next class. Because you've been on like every single class. <laughs> yeah, I try to be. Um, I get ideas when, for when I work out by myself. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's very good. Um, I'm going to wait a few minutes because people always roll in a little bit after, but, um, we'll, we'll, t we'll talk about maybe a few questions you guys like to look at before we get started. Also join in at two o'clock. I'm going to do the ice bath Q and a, and I need some good questions from you guys. Um, Mr. Jeff, anything specific you'd like to look at today? Um, I'm just curious, uh, when you start your match and you're engaging, uh, I, do you look for, are you more in defensive position, more in attack position? Are you more trying to feel the opponent? Are you uh, trying to get them off balance? Uh, you're talking about standing? Uh, no, on the ground. What position? Just when your first your first engagement, I guess it'll be it could be a transition from the standing to the ground, but yeah, sometimes I'm not even sure like how to explain it. It's I'm I'm, I'm trying to feel the person, mm -hmm. and then I find myself okay. Now I'm behind the curve, and I'm trying to recover. Yeah, or I'm not trying to be too aggressive and and burn out my gas tank. Things like that. Uh, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, uh, so this is more kind of like um um. More of a concept, like I guess, than a like a technique uh, that we look at. But one thing to think about here, and I think I tell I tell George this too, is like um, sometimes we get caught up in looking at what the other person is doing, out of either curiosity or, um, or we feel like we have to go with it a little bit for some reason, because we don't know what they're doing. So we we tend to wait and sort of let it let it happen. And um, it's, it's a lot of times better if we put ourselves in, um, just try to put ourselves in a, in a controlling position. So I guess, for example, like if I were, let me move this a little bit. I don't have a partner today, so um, you're not to bear with me, but if I were like passing the guard, you know, like I'm, I'm working a pass and I see somebody you know, moving or going for something. Uh, and I feel like I have to look at what they're doing, you know, and, and, and see it through. It's better for me to distance myself from their pressure and then try to force my way into like a, you know, maybe like a half guard where I have more control. So I'm trying to do two things. I'm trying to eliminate the controlling grips and pressure points they have. Feet on the hips, hooks, grips, uh, I want to I want to posture away from those, and then I want to get to a position where I feel balanced. Like if I'm on top, right? I don't want to let the person just start moving their game. Um, so I don't know if this is really the answer that you're kind of looking for, but I, I see this a lot. I see people like almost waiting to see what the opponent's going to do. It's like they want to see like how are you know what are you doing? What I haven't seen those grips before. I haven't seen this movement. And they're just, they wait for it too much and they allow it, you know, to happen. Um, and then it's too late. You don't have to see what they're doing. You don't have to know what they're doing. You have to know 
in your, you have to be confident in the integrity of your preposition. Okay. If it's on the bottom and they're, and I see them manipulating like some weird grips, don't let them do that. Right. Can get the grips and control you want and start going for, for your uh, attack. So it's kind of an old school idea, but it's not outdated. The, you know, the position before submission is really just position before anything, right? Get to a position of control. And when you do that, then you can make your next move without, um, without complicating, uh, without overcomplicating or thinking about everything. If it doesn't work, then, you know, then you're going to learn how they, how they beat you. But I, I think sometimes people hesitate too much. Um, the other end of that is they just, they go for the kill, you know, too quickly. They, they go for it without the positional control. They just want to go for the move. And they don't have their posture or their frame or their base or whatever um, position they're working from. They don't have a position of stability before going for a technique. Find your position of stability and then you know, work from there. Um, so yeah, without looking, you know, without having a specific uh, technique to look at, um, that's just kind of a, a thought process, I, I would say. You know, we, we, we sometimes get over, over concerned with somebody because they're a higher rank. We're like, oh, or, or they're good at something in particular. We think, oh, I'm not gonna be able to do anything. Let me just, um, let me just hold them off, but, or, or, or kind of like stall a little bit just to survive, but, um, but yeah, we still, we still want to try to find a, a position of, you know, control. And then, and then, and then as soon as I have that, I start making my move. There's no need to wait. If you wait, they're going to quickly move you into a position where you have less control. So, um, okay. Yes. I think we yes. have, yeah, it's like, like you're at, I think you're the other day you were showing like the mount position. Yeah. I, I'll get the control. I'll, I definitely go for the control. And then I wait for an opportunity to see how they move not to force it. Right. And I start, I, that's the game I can try just kind of looking for opportunities as opposed to going for the kill, just trying to force it. Sure. Be more uh, gas efficient or more. Uh, yeah. Well, one thing to think about if you're in the mount, you're holding all the cards. You don't have to wait for them to make their move. You can quite literally force yourself upon them with your, with your grips. Now you don't want to, be sloppy and just go for like a choke and you lose your, you lose your balance. But you all, you don't need to wait until they start to try to escape to attack them. Right. And mount, by the way, is not just, you know, the mount, like having the mounts here versus having a mount with a cross face or having a mount, with a collar control smashing into their neck is very different. All totally different mount. A high mount where I have their arms smushed in, very different than a mount where they're on the side pushing my leg, right? So I've got to deal with all those things, but I, I never just want to hold the mount and wait. Like I immediately want an, a, a hand that I can threaten with. And I like that kind of thumb in cross collar grip. I want a position of control that I can threaten with immediately. Because with that hand in, what can I do? I can do the X choke, variations of it. When you grab, I can slide up to the arm bar. I can frame, you know, against your neck, forcing you to react in a way that favors me. Maybe giving up your back or giving up an arm bar. Um, and, I, and you become more predictable on the bottom when I have a controlling grip, right? Because if, if I'm just based, you can escape left or right. I don't know which way you're going to go. If I have a frame, I know you're going that way. You can't turn into my forearm and, do, and, and escape that way. So I've just eliminated half of the options that the person on bottom has. Just by going from a mount to a gripping position. And that is just a matter of making sure that you can maintain... Um, your balance on the top and you're not easily rolled. That just comes with positioning your, uh, your body in the right, the right position. Right. Okay, team. So we're going to go through some Thank movements you. and sweat a little bit and do some drills. And um, 
And then we're going to get to some more, uh, more Q&A in a little bit and try to, try to look at some drills we can do. And I actually have a drill idea for that, Jeff. So make sure you guys are muted. I'm going to mute you, Kaitha. And I think we're all muted. Hey, Andrew's here. Alex is back. Michael Quinn's here. Good. Okay, here we go. Let's bow in, team. Good. Here we are. Ready, stand. Get together, tension, and let's bow. Good. All right. So we're just gonna do a little stretch right here. I'll turn sideways for this one. All right. I want to see you guys come up, point your toes, come down, touch your toes, flatten your back out, walk out, push up. Here, back, and then either step up or bend your knees and hop up. Okay? Again, one more. Up, point your toes, come down, touch your toes, flatten your back out, and now here we can hop back, push up, flatten your toes out, come up, um, walk right here. Okay? Step or jump. Last one. Up. Inhale. Down. Exhale. Inhale, flatten your back. Exhale, push back. Inhale. Good. Come up. Bend your knees. And now, let's do this chair pose right here. Stay right here, okay? Hands up. Hands together, up. Good, all right. Go right into our first drill. We're gonna do this a little bit out of order just to kind of uh, start a little bit quicker. So everybody's in this position, right? Good. We're gonna step, kick, back, here. I'm gonna keep it on one side just for a second, okay? We'll keep one side. What I want you to think about here is not really sitting all the way down. I want you to be a little bit loaded. So step, come on. Everybody, waiting for some of you. There we go. Kick, back, and when you come back, as long as it doesn't bother your knee, don't let this hip touch on this one, okay? We're gonna go here and then step again. Here, step again. But what you'll notice is you stay kind of fast. It's like, like if I'm going from my guard to a quick double leg, right? I'm fast. I didn't commit all the way to sitting down, okay? One more time. Step, kick. Now let's switch it around the world. Good. Good. Now, here we go. Step up, okay, kick, and now we come back. We're not sitting down. We're stopping right here, okay? Step, kick, back, here. Good, have a seat. Now switch it. Good, and look, if you're having trouble with that around the world drill, because I know I didn't really show it, watch my head. It's moving in a circle 
just like my leg. To the head, their head goes in a circle too. If your head goes back, your legs go back, your hips come up, you have no spin, right? Circle. Try one more time. Circle. That's how we do this one. I kick the leg wide. This leg kicks as far over. Let's just do this a few times. Kick. It's like you gotta kick a soccer ball like you're a goalie. You gotta kick it low. Here. See that? Kick, cross. Now kick and spin. Good. Other side, kick, back, kick. When you kick, let yourself go all the way to the side. Here. All the way across, guys. Look, look at my foot. Some of you staying right here and just kicking. Okay, this isn't gonna work. Okay, all the way here. And then all the way around. Let's see it. Good, much better, much better. Very nice. Okay, next drill. We're just gonna do the first part, okay? This move, this part of this movement is very important for protecting against the back mount very quickly. When somebody, when you expose your back and you've gotta hide your elbows and knees, right? So watch, you're going here. <laughs> Knees off the ground, both of them. Only my hands and feet are touching. And then reset. So let's try this one, team. Let me come a little closer. So you can kind of see what's happening here. Here. All together now. Come on. You can keep watching while you set it up. Right? And then you do a little spring action push to put your feet. Let's come back in here. Stay with your hands there. Back. Here. Back. Okay. Defensive push-ups, right? Now, some of you are up here. That's okay if you need that for base. But I want you, if you can, to stay low. So watch when I switch. See that? Let's try it. Stay low. Or maybe you start up and you fall. That's okay. Now switch around the world. Good. Remember that around the world. Head, leg kicks across. Right? Here. Put the soccer ball. Now. Other side, lean into it and switch. My knee is on my elbow. Oh, my knee is straight. Switch back. A little bit of noise, I'm going to mute you guys. Good, okay, let's keep doing that one, guys. Here. And back. Fall. Back. Fall. Back. Fall. Back. Fall. Back. Keep going. Hold. Back. Around the world. Watch the around the world. My hips do not lift. Here's what I see very often. Right? Hips stay on the ground. They just turn 
so my legs can move. Okay, good. Okay, let's get some wave action. This has become one of my, maybe my favorite drill. I think it's the most fun. I think it's very effective. Um, really makes our guard retention and recovery uh, take, a, take another uh, step forward. So my arms kind of turn like this. You notice all these movements I'm controlling with my core, okay? I'm using my hands for a certain amount of base, especially like on a push-up. But on this one, there's really no, no hands except when to help my lower back. So arm behind, let's all do it together. Legs up. Other side. Here. Arm behind. Legs up. Here. Good. A bit this way to get this angle. Arm behind. Up. Good. Let's try to do that one slowly now. Let's go right here. Just come up. Everyone get here. Hand floating, knee tucked in, elbow in, but no hands on the floor. Now just try to go up. Now come back slowly. Yes. Good. I'm in. Okay, up, other side, slowly, just touching, arm in, protecting, back up, okay, left to right, now all the way, and back. Good, keep working it. We're gonna see how you guys do this. Raiden, I don't see you doing it, buddy. I see you showing me your fidget spinner. That it is not the drill. It lights up. I know, but we gotta practice now, buddy. Let's practice. Can you see everybody else? Good. If it's not perfect, doesn't need to be. It just needs to have effort. That's it. Good, Alex. Good. Try to get a little more on the shoulders. Good, Angie. Everybody else is just a, a name on a screen. I know not everybody can do the, has a space, and we're just here for the Q&A, so that's all right. Whoops. Okay, all right, good work. Okay, now let's do a little bit of um, uh, a drill we did the other day. We, we hadn't really done it in a while. And I think this is one of the best drills also for um, defending, okay? Because we all know shrimping and we, we use it less often than we should, mostly because we get shut down and we're not lifting on the shrimp. We're just trying to shrimp from a flat position and get pinned, right? So here's the drill. We'll do it, uh, I'll start right here, okay? I'm going to come up. I'm gonna roll to my shoulder. I'm gonna move all the way to my forearms and then go my other shoulder and we sit here. So it's kind of like a shrimping sit out. Hips are up. Preferably heels are up, okay? Turn, walk through, turn, sit down. Do this, good, go. And move. Let me see everybody do this one. Hips never touch the ground. It's only my shoulders. Take my head a little bit, okay? And try to keep your heels up too. Keep going, team. Keep going. 
Let's see it. Let's see it. Who's got the best one? Make sure I can see you. Good, Alex. Nice, Angie. Got two Alexes going. Good. Good. Okay. All right. So let's start. Um, um, let's do another one similar to that. A lot of these ideas, they, they're very similar in nature, these movements. Um, they all are beneficial for uh, recovery, but sometimes we have to move sideways and twist. Sometimes we have to stack up but we need to be able to find comfort and stability on our shoulders and our feet and not rely on the pushing of our hands or have our hips on the ground, okay? So we're going to do like we did before with the uh, back. We're gonna start forward. I wanna see this. First thing I'm gonna do is roll straight back. Catch my foot. I'm just on my shoulder and foot right here. Make sure you just hang out here a while. And then look, try to pop back up with your hand. You can use your hands to help. Roll back. Sitting guard. Try to go no feet on the floor. Other side. Here. Now. Up. Sitting up. Do it this way. Right shoulder. Hold. Hold on my foot and shoulder. Up. Sitting up. Good. So here's how we're going to do this to make it just a little more fun. Okay. Let's do this together. We're going to come back. We're going to meet back here, right? So first, go over the left shoulder. Hold. Come back up. Hold. Sit in guard. And let's do five, um, three of these per leg. One, two, three. Hold. Keep it. Right shoulder. Up in the air. Back. Three. One. Two. Three. Hold. Left shoulder. Back up. And here. Three. One. Two. Three. One more set. Right shoulder. In the air. Sit in guard. Three. One. Two. Three. Last one. Left shoulder. Stand up. Sit in guard. Hold it. Let's hold here for a second. Feet up. Hands out. Breathe, bring one knee into your chest, bring in the other, bring in both, bring out both, three, one, two, three, good. Okay, that one should warm you up a little bit. So, um, yeah, look for the control on the shoulder. So many of your escapes are going to come down to you being able to turn to your side, either facing them or facing away, and either stepping, moving, recovering, or rolling to the shoulder. Okay? So 
those are some of the absolute best drills that you can do every day. And it should be second nature. You should be able to put a blindfold on. You should be able to do it in a dark room. Um, you should be able to do this without, uh, you know, falling over too easily. Now, I still lose my balance a little bit. That's why I'm still working on them. So we can all improve. I know everyone knows the move because we've been doing it a few times this past week. Um, look for opportunities to challenge yourself by changing the speed and angle of difficulty, right? If you're like, oh yeah, I can go back and, you know, easily just touch my foot. Yeah, can you go all the way to here? And then can you come back and then can you go up, right? It doesn't take long. I got pretty good at that by teaching it and trying, trying. I was like, oh, you can expand upon this drill, right? Let's see how far I can stretch out. Let's see if I can go to the up position. And you start combining elements of different solo drills. And when you do that, um, you're actually mimicking a real fight because you're, you're constantly being pulled and challenged in different directions when somebody is attacking you. We have to react in different, you know, different ways. We halfway start to escape and then our, our attacker changes their approach and we have to react and move differently. So combine these drills. This is why the tiger routine is so effective because you go from one to the other. But, um, but you can make up your own combinations to make things a little bit unpredictable. You can go left, you can go right, you can extend the stretch, you can shorten the stretch, you can pause, you can slow things down, you can speed things up. And each of those different factors makes things feel like, uh, like, it's, in a, like it's a real match, okay? So, um, Let's, um, let's do just a couple more. Just don't want to loosen up the hips a little bit more. And then uh, we'll open up for some more questions, okay? So let's get to our hip walking drill. Okay. So we're here, sitting back. And this one, by the way, okay, remember, if, if you always feel that you're losing your balance, probably one or two things happen. You're keeping your back straight and it's too much momentum, or you're falling into your knee, which isn't great on your knee, and then you sit. So I need to sit. By the way, you ever try to pass the dog, they pull you in, we sometimes we back away, right? Okay. We lose our balance, we regain it, we pass again. Okay, so this is actually um, a great drill for passing the guard. And dealing with uh, separation of grips, loss of balance, but not conceding the sweep and recovery. So we sit, we, everything touches together. Sit, everything touches together. I move my hands a little off to the side as a counter to my balance forward. Step, turn all the way. If you're up for it, add some spin, add a little power. See how good you can get at that spin. You might not have a mat, so I'm not sure how easy this is for everyone with your, uh, yeah, if you're doing it on carpet, but see how you can do it. You might want to skip the spin and just work on the fall. But let's see how we're doing with these so far, team. Good, Alex. I see you, um, Alex Garcia. Good spin, buddy. Really good spin. Sit back a little bit so we fall on the hip. Remember, we're not falling on that knee. Use your hand. By the way, guys, it's okay to use your hand when you're figuring it out. Maybe you're here, but you feel like, ah, it's not there. Just put your hand down. Look. Make it happen the right way, okay? Do whatever it takes to be technically accurate before making it faster, more powerful, or more difficult. Add the element of assistance in there until you're ready for the next stage, okay? That's always okay. 
always okay. Don't ever try to feel like, I gotta do it, and then you're smashing your knees all day, right? Don't do that. Just say, okay, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna get this position to land perfect. Now, going here. Now, lose your balance, catch yourself, maybe pause. Find out where you lost your balance. Go back, find that spot where you lost your balance, and then try to correct it. I see this happening all the time uh, in jiu-jitsu class too. You know, we're always in a race against our teammates or in a hurry to finish the drill. And we're stumbling through some of them and we're losing our balance and we're just kind of rushing. When you lose your balance, what you ought to be doing is stepping back. Go back to right where you lost your balance and figure it out. Like, keep doing these spin drills, guys. I'm just talking. But like when we do these uh, toe test drills and you lose your balance, sometimes it's like we're trying to like hurry up. No, no, no. Just put your foot down. Find where you lost your balance, okay? You're training your, your muscle memory. And then you figure out like, oh, it was right there. I need to engage a little bit more. It's how you teach yourself how to, um, how your body responds to falling and to stress. You find tight parts of your body that are throwing you off, right? Like I balance differently on one leg than the other. One leg is a dominant leg. Um, it's weird. My, uh, my right hip is way more flexible than my left, but my left hamstring way more flexible than my, than my right. That gives me some imbalances that I have to try to work with and stretch. Okay. 30 more seconds of this team. That's looking much better. Good. And really keep your, keep your core. So just because I'm using my hand doesn't mean I'm totally relaxing. I'm using my hand just enough, but I'm trying to keep my core strong. See that? It's like I'm keeping my back straight. And then as soon as I can, take your hand up, feel the position. Right? Feel where it's like, like you want to be pulled this way, but you try to keep yourself up a little bit as you go. Pay real close attention to this. This is why yoga is so valuable. Because yoga, you'll be in a position, and you're just holding it. And it can be super boring if you're if you're uh, if you allow it, or you can pay close attention to what's happening to your body. Like, oh, this muscle is real tight. This one is good, but I feel super off balance. So I like when I go to yoga, and sometimes there's like a 70 year old lady in the class, and she's just murdering the class more than anybody. Like she's doing better than me and everyone. It's not because she's physically stronger or in better shape. Um, but her body has adapted to the stresses that she's been putting on it for years and years. Right? So you can be strong, like you can move weight around, but are you strong in a jujitsu sense? Are you strong in the sense that you can function with strength in a jujitsu weird position and a stretched out, De La Hiva, you're about to get knocked over, but you're strong, okay? That's where it counts for jujitsu. Strength in these um, unorthodox positions. Okay, so good practice so far. Let's um, open it up and take some questions. And yeah, I apologize, I'm kind of uh, solo today, but uh, I'm, I'm going to do my best to answer the question. Angie, what kind of dog do you have? Is that a lab? I unmuted you. Oh, is that a pit bull? Oh, cool. Okay, I'll meet you again. <laughs> All right. Um, let's open it up for some questions now, though. I know uh, Professor Jeff had a great question uh, earlier. I don't know if I answered it the best way, but I was just trying – it was just in general about, like uh, – Kind of what's the approach for like when starting a match? You know, like are you feeling out the person or are you going right for it? And, um, you know, like a short answer, I say, if you have a chance, you go right for it, right? If you have a winning opening, you, there's no need to fill it out. You've got to recognize opportunity in a match and capitalize on it. Um, to me, that is, that is where better guys lose matches sometimes is they make a mistake early on in the match 
and their opponent, who maybe wasn't overall as good as them, capitalized on it right away. They saw it and they're like, oh, there's my, there's my shot. I'm taking it. And then they just held it and they kept the pressure and the, uh, you know, the person couldn't catch up and they eventually lose on points or whatever it is. So, um, yeah, early on in the match, you've got to recognize an opportunity. You've got to look for it. You don't want to be sloppy and just get go for the kill without uh, anything, without knowing what your opening is. Uh, but when you see it, you know, there's, there's no rule that's like, hey, you know, the first minute needs to be kind of uh, give and take. No. We do that when we're flow training. We do that in, in sparring when you train with somebody new. You know what I mean? Like you just met them and you're like, okay, I don't want to try to kill you, you know, because I don't want you to do that to me. We don't know each other. But if it's a match where it's like the objective is to win, you've got whatever, let's say it's a seven-minute match. Every minute is of equal value. So if you see an opening early on, you take it right away. Uh, what other questions do we have, team? Just unmute yourself and, um, and start asking. No one, huh? Make sure you guys know, you know you're muted. I have a question. Yes. So since we're talking about like that, that whole movement of like escaping, um, do you like to keep your elbows like tucked in the entire time that you're escaping? Because sometimes if I'm trying, if I'm like shrimping and I'm trying to come back and recover guard, I always bring that underhook up, but I always yeah. end up like either doing it too low or too high. So I don't know if I should just start like keeping it in when I'm escaping or trying to swim for the underhook right away as I'm going belly down. Yeah, no, underhooks are fine. Um, uh, there's no, um, hold on just a second here. Okay, I was just checking another question. Yeah, so um, doing an underhook uh, no, there's no rule like elbows have to always be in, right? I'll have elbows in. I'll push with my elbow when I want to create a frame. I'll use underhook when I want to elevate and move. And I'll push with my hands to separate at different times too. I, I talk a lot about elbows in because I feel that that's more of a starting point where people get caught. They get yeah. caught and they're pinned. And it's like, well, there's no pushing when the person is pinning you. Yeah. And sometimes there's no underhook. And also... Uh, Angela, like, have you ever done an underhook when you were flat? And like, yeah, I try to do it when I'm flat. Like, I'm, I'm on my stomach and I'm trying to swim for it. Yeah, it's like if you're, well, if I'm on my back going for it and they're pinning me, they can turn and come on me pretty quickly. Yeah. When I'm, put, when I'm flat, I like to be here. The more angle I get, the more I separate. And yeah. the more I get, now I can look for like an underhook. And by the way, like, if I do an underhook from the side mount, I really like to use my knee to support my mm -hmm. right? Because sometimes here, what do they do? Like they'll wizard over the top. They'll go for that or they'll smash the arm down, right? So I like to go here. Because if I get an underhook on you, right? Just try to imagine, like I have an underhook and my legs here, you cannot wizard me. I can bump you like this and really knock it. And now maybe I go for like a regular one. So, um, no, if I just keep my elbows in and shrimp, eventually, like, I, I, my, my separation is limited to this space. In the beginning, I need, I need just that. But if I stay here, no, I got to move and then sometimes push, underhook, frame. I'll do all those. Um, yeah, and, and the best way to know is if you're doing it and you're getting caught in something, then something has to be adjusted. So you, again, it's the idea of combining the elements of ideas to find where they fit into the equation. You know, not, not just like, like I learned an underhook early on and I hated it for a long time because I kept getting smashed because I didn't know how to make space before utilizing the underhook. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like all the moves work, but they don't all work in in the, um, the same context, you know, it's, it's what, what is happening in the situation and what's the best use of my, of my 
defense right now. But yeah. Um, hold on just a second. I'm going to turn off the, um, the air conditioner pretty loud. Okay, so we had a question from Raiden. I want to read it here. Let me find it again. It was, um, why these drills can be so hard to do, is there a way to work up to them? <laughs> a really good question. So, yes. So listen, when we're doing a class like this, Raiden, and we have a lot of different people in the class, right? So we have white belts. Sometimes we have kids. Sometimes we have, you know, brown or black belts on the class and everyone's at a different level. So some of the drills are going to be like the black belt drills. Those are going to be much harder because that's for a black belt. They, they, they need more challenge and they need something more difficult. So, but one thing I try to uh, mention and I try to say is that you can always take a drill and do part of the drill. You can do the easier part before adding on the more difficult part, right? So like, here's an example, I'll show you one. And here's a way to think about the other drills. You think about what part of the drill can you do? And then you practice that. And then once you feel good with that, then add the more difficult part. So here's a drill that takes a lot of balance and might be a little bit difficult. Okay, we do this one, right? Over here, we step, we kick, we come back down and we go like that. All pretty smooth, but I've practiced it for a really long time. So when you practice a long time, you'll get it too. So maybe that's a little bit much, but here's one thing I can do. I can lift my chest up. That's the first part of the drill. And I can sit back down. Up. Yeah, see how I'm in my position? It's a weird position with my legs. So this and that. Now maybe the next part is add the step. So touch your back leg. And now we're going to come up, step. And even the grown-ups do this, right? Even in the adult class, we do this. We go here. And maybe come back. Up, step. And then, like, maybe you feel like you lost your balance. Put your hand down. Help yourself. That's okay, too. Now, if I want to get creative, instead of doing the first part of the drill, I'm going to skip. And I'm going to do just the kick. So do this with me real quick. My leg is here, right? Touch your back leg, touch the knee that's down. That leg is gonna, that foot is gonna high five this hand. It doesn't have to be pretty, you just gotta try it. So come up, kick, go back down. We're just doing that, that's it. Just that kick. Come up, go down. Good. Not a kick. I'm going to hit this hand, that foot. Yeah, hit the other hand. Try one more time. Kick. There you go. Good. Now look. Take this leg, put it behind you. You still have, so you're still up with this leg. You're real lucky that you have help. That's good. Okay, now, last one. Go up. Up like this. There you go. Step. Good. Now with this hand. With this hand. Kick. Awesome, buddy. Very nice. Good. Okay, so look. Um, that's actually a really good question because that goes for everybody when you're having trouble with drills. Uh, and it can be a technique too. You don't have to do, let's say a move has 10 steps. You don't have to do one through 10 in that order. You do one through three, and then you can do four, five, and six, and just practice those for a while. And then you can do seven through 10 and practice those, and then come back and try to do the whole thing. So yeah, drills are difficult because sometimes you, you do white belt drills, sometimes you do black belt drills, and the black belt drills are more advanced. So now here's the other thing, why they're difficult. The other part of them being difficult is they work your body. So they make you sweat and they burn your muscles. They make you tired. 
That's why a lot of people don't do them because not everybody wants to be a black belt. Not everybody wants to be a great martial artist. But you guys do. Everyone watching here does. That's why you're here. That's why you decided to be in martial arts because you're not doing the same thing that everyone else does. A lot of people want to just watch TV and relax and they don't have big goals. And you have big goals, you have big responsibility, and you have big challenges, but you keep working on them little by little. Good question, Raiden. Okay, um, Michael Quinn, what are the differences from the Ochigari and Kochigari? Is it a grip difference or a foot sweeping difference? It's a foot sweeping difference, right? So, and just like a little Japanese language lesson. O means big, ko means little. Ochigari, right? is a big inside reap, right? I'm sweeping my foot. Kochigari, right, is a little inside reap. So, ko, they're both inside sweeps to the leg, right? So if I'm like looking at you, right? So imagine you're standing in front of me, your left leg, if I have this, if I have a right-handed grip, my right leg, I'm gonna come and sweep your left leg, oh, Chigari, okay? If it's your right leg, maybe I get you to take a step forward or I plant your foot, step in, and it's just a little bit of a sweep, right? And that's all, all it is, oh, Chikochi. You also have oh, Sotogari, right? Boom. But I have ko, Sotogari. Right, trip with the outside leg. It's a little outside foot sweep. So it's just the difference. Um, one means big, one means little. Um, it is a different technique, but the hand grip is not really, not what matters. I can be gripping different ways and still do my kochi, my ouchi. That's not the difference, but yeah, good question. Um, one more. And the other one, something? So Jefferson, I'm going to just mute you guys real quick so the screen stays the same. Jefferson, uh, Jefferson, unmute yourself if you can. Yes, sir. Okay. So your question, this way I can kind of chat back and forth. What book has had the biggest influence on my uh, jiu-jitsu, you said? Yeah, just in your – well, yeah, in uh, jiu it's kind of a social question. Uh, what yeah. book has had what book has had a uh, the biggest impact influence on your uh, your, your training or and also uh, to help you with BJJ? Yeah. So this is going to surprise you, but the answer th there's a few books I really like, but maybe the best one was a book called The Inner Game of Tennis, and um, it's a tennis book. I don't really play tennis, but it's not about tennis only it is a mindset visualization drill book it's amazing i, I recommend like you guys read it I, like i think you'll i think you'll love it and i think there's been a few um maybe um offshoots of it you know like the inner game of you know some other things uh other sports okay but one thing that i think is so cool about this book is they talk about how you approach the mental game of tennis. Like, like tennis, like any sport, highly competitive, especially it's two players, a big audience. Um, and I mean, you can, you can go from almost winning to losing in, in a couple of serves. So it's parallel to jujitsu. Like you can go from, you know, dominating to losing in a couple of, um, just a couple of movements. And so it's been a few years, I think I wanna read it again. You know, it talks about how you look at the ball, how you visualize, you know, the, the placement of your, you know, rack and the connection to the ball. Um, it talks about what most people do versus what is most effective. And it talks about how, how to analyze mistakes and emotions. So you can literally place the word tennis for any other skill. And this book is fantastic. I've read technique books, but technique books are like, there's a million of those. You know what I mean? Everybody's got their own version. 
and you're not going to do it their way anyway. You're going to have, you have your own body and your own strength. And so everything's a little different. And there's a lot of those and they're great. I love the, um, the Hibero book. Um, you know, it's like the best fundamental technique book that I've, that I've seen. And then I've read, um, other, um, you know, another one like, um, George can help me with this. I think it's called like, uh, mental, just mental toughness for sports. It's the red book. I forgot what it's called. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on that. Like, uh, but anyway, okay. I still like the inner game of tennis. I think that's the winner. Yeah. And I would read it. And, and, and listen, the reason why, like, that's such a good, um, way of thinking we get locked into a mindset of jujitsu is its own thing. It's not judo. It's not wrestling. It's not nogi. It's jujitsu. I want to do jujitsu moves. And so we learn a wrestling, you know, we, we see a wrestling technique and we're like, Oh, that's, well, that's not what I'm doing. Yes, you are. It's grappling. You can, you can do all these wrestling moves. People don't like to do judo. Like, you're crazy. Where did the sport come from? It comes right from judo. It's a modified, we like, we are training really modern judo. We're training judo without the sport element, right? We have, we have a different set of rules for the judo that we're playing. Um, and it, and it's a judo that allows wrestling and sambo and all different grappling elements. And that's what we're doing. And that's the way you should think about it. But even beyond that, thinking about, you know, the ability to think outside the box. That's why like a book about tennis, people think like, why, how does that help at all? It's like, well, what do tennis players have to do? They have to deal with the anxiety of competition. They have to deal with the pressure of an opponent who's aggressively coming, you know, catching up to them. They have to visualize very quickly an element of attack speeding at them. In their case, the ball. And then they have to react without thinking. So how do you do that? By drilling over and over and over again. You drill until you can do this stuff without thought and your body just takes over. And if you read that and you try to plug in jujitsu you know, jiu ideas in place of tennis ideas, I think that'll be one of the most valuable reads that you'll, that you'll have. Um, and I feel like a lot of the concepts that I share come from uh, methods of learning and teaching that I didn't get from the jujitsu classroom. And that's what a real, you know, like the real champions out there, like if you ever watched those, um, the documentary pumping iron with Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's a, it's yes, serious, yes. right. But we're, remember where he's going to do his training. He's going to a ballet instructor, right? Because the ballet instructor is teaching like how to do a pose that is most impressive. But how many people in the, in the bodybuilding world connect ballet and bodybuilding? I never would. It doesn't seem like anything related. George St. Pierre does ballet. He gets laughed at. Greatest champion in history, arguably. So, you know, that, that to me, like, that, there's a real opportunity um, to, to gain knowledge by seeking it in external from external sources not just you know from um not just from the mat as much as i you know i want you guys here but i, I like i want you to branch out i want you reading you know different things and then bringing that wisdom on into your game and uh, and applying it there and and it's also more fun that way it's way more fun to have like this like kind of almost like childlike curiosity and imagination you get to express it with jujitsu but learning it from you know a lot of different places. Um, let me see who. Thank you, sir. I, I apologize. I have to drop off. I have eleven. I have eleven a.m. meeting. Okay. Good and question. Uh, I'm glad you asked that. I enjoy talking about that. <laughs> I got some other ones for you too, but uh, I'll save it for another one. Uh, okay. Thank you so much for everything you're doing, and uh, and have a great day. You too, bro. Thank you. Um. Yeah, George. I think it is just mental toughness. And then I think it's like, I think there was like a subtitle of like the inner, you know, mental toughness of sports or something. I wish I remember the author's name. Um, oh, the inner game of music is an offshoot of the same author. Very cool. There's another one, guys. Uh, George and I make a, we, we talk a lot about the, 
um, comparison between music and, and jiu-jitsu. Um, and then Michael Quinn, another Japanese lesson, jiu-jitsu just means technique in its basic term. Yeah, very cool. All right, guys. Well, I think that was a, was a solid ending to the class. Um, I hope you guys got a lot out of that. Now you have a book to read. You know, I was thinking, I'm, I'm glad you said that. I was thinking about a book I wanted to give to everyone um, because we did Mindset and we did, what was the other book I had you guys all read? Mindset, um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I think I might get that mental toughness book. I would get The Inner Game of Tennis, but I don't think, I don't think enough people would like, I think they would think I was weird if I gave them a tennis book. They wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't do it. So hopefully you guys, guys that see the video will just go out and get that book. But um, the mental toughness one is a really good one. So I think I might get that for everyone. I was going to get Jocko's Extreme Ownership, but I can't find any copies for less than like $20 online, even buying in bulk. And for 300 students, that's, uh, that's a bit much. <laughs> yeah, How to Win Friends and Influence People. That's another really good one. Maybe that one. Maybe that one. We haven't done that one yet as a, as a group. Um, yeah, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. Hey. I think I gave, did I give that one to everybody? I think I did too. Or maybe just to the kids. Huh. Anyway. All right. Well, I'm going to get on that team. Guys, thank you so much. Um, we're going to bow out now. Please, um, if you enjoy this, uh, tell your teammates to jump on. And I will see you all Monday, 2 p.m. Please join in either on this or on Facebook Live. Have some questions ready to go. Oh, the Psychology of Winning. Another great book. And uh, I'm going to do the ice plunge 10 minute Q and a in really, really cold water. So um, that's it guys. Thank you. Let's line up. Here we go guys. Ready steps. Feet together. Tension. Wow. Thank you guys. Awesome. Awesome class today. See you in a couple hours.